welcome to my classroom in fluid mechanics course in this module flow measuring devices we are going to discuss about venturi meters and arivahis meters in this lecture actually flow measuring devices are important because we have to ensure that fluid control processes in the industries will run smoothly safely and cost effectively because when we are pumping the liquid from one place to another place some cost is involved because we are running the pump that pump is consuming some energy electrical energy right so that needs to be supplied so that way if we are able to use the optimum uh, power requirement so in that case we can ensure that we are uh, running the industry at cost effective manner okay so this flow measuring is important because we are interested to know what is the capacity or what is the velocity or is the volumetric flow rate at which the fluid is flowing in a pipeline in industries right so even since 1980s if you look at there are around 23 distinct type of flow measuring devices which are in the market and some of them are most widely used and each instrument has its own advantages and disadvantages and if you look at this market of flow measuring devices in 2020 the dollar around it is it was around 8.3 8.3 billion dollars us dollars was the market value of these flow measuring devices and in 2021 it is around 8.8 billions okay so that way and if you look at the market demand if you look at the compound annual growth rate of these flow measuring devices it is around 5.8 up to 2028 so that way there is a good demand for flow measuring devices in the market also that's why we have to we should know the principles and how to how these flow measuring devices are operating so what are the desired requirements I mean, basic requirements that are needed for a good flow measurement devices if you look at we should be able to calibrate it well so ability to get calibrated and if there is any flow fluctuations in the system how it will able to integrate with that one so the ability to integrate with the flow fluctuations is also an important case and also the installation should be easy with the piping already existing piping system is there we should know how easy it is to get it uh, linked the device should get connected to the already existing piping system okay it should not demand a huge shutdown of the unit then we have to connect it like that right so that way easy integration is an important criteria and also if you look at the uh, accuracy always we need a high accuracy the data should be reliable right reproducibility also an important case so highly accurate and reproducibility is one other basic requirement for any flow measuring devices and third turn down ratio should be high and obviously it should not be expensive it should the cost should be low and any dust particles or foreign particles are coming into the system it should have very low sensitivity towards those foreign particles that are coming into the system and mainly major important point is that uh, when there is a pressure loss will be there anyhow when whenever a fitting or any device is connected to the system it is mostly if it is a variable head meter like venturi meter or rfis meter pressure will be converted right pressure energy is converted to kinetic energy kind of thing so that needs to be the recovery of pressure is an important issue because if the instrument is good we should able to recover most of the pressure losses okay so pressure recovery is important that's why we should have no pressure loss or minimum pressure loss should be there in the system and uh, with respect to number of moving parts if there are more moving parts are there if it is corrosive liquids or kind of thing it will corrosion erosion will take place so that's why if it is having less or zero, no moving parts in the device it is well and good for it okay so that is another requirement for uh, any good uh, flow measuring device and obviously the mechanical strength and the resistance to corrosion and erosion also should be important for us okay so when coming to this measurement of flow measuring de devices mostly we have to recall what are the different uh, equations that we are going to use in it okay so primarily in fluid mechanics we define one dimensionless number called as reynolds number which is defined as the ratio of inertial force to viscous force which we have also discussed in our previous lectures so this inertial force to viscous force they when when inertial forces are predominant your reynolds number is going to be high when your viscous forces are predominant reynolds number is going to be less so if viscous force are predominant it means that the liquid fluid is also more viscous that means the that flow reynolds number is going to be less 
which means that the flow is going to be laminar flow right so whereas if the reynolds number are above more than 4000 we are going to have turbulent flow conditions so and in between we are going to have transition flow also so we have even seen the what will be the velocity profile for a laminar flow if it is a perfect uh, if it is a laminar flow we are going to have a fully developed flow what is fully developed flow oh, since it is entering into a uh, entrance it is free from any disturbances we are going to have a fully developed flow where the boundary layer imaginary boundary layer in the pipeline from the entrance to the point it will be narrowed down to the center of the pipeline beyond which the velocity profile remains same that means it doesn't change its shape if it is hyperbolic shape we, uh, along the locations the hyperbolic shape will be maintained let us see this animation a fully developed flow implies the flow velocity profile in the flow direction for example if we, this is the x direction the fluid is flowing along the x direction a fully developed flow implies the the velocity profile in the x direction that is the flow direction does not change with respect to position that is velocity profile is having a certain shape like parabolic shape it will continue to have a parabolic shape at every location it does not change why it is so because this um, this pressure the pressure in the fluid direction will balance the shear stress near the wall at this condition so at a fully developed flow condition what is that the pressure in the flow direction is balanced by the shear stress near the wall okay so that way here there is no momentum change there is no velocity profile change after this length called as a transition length so since uh, a pipeline is there if there is an entrance point there is a transition length distance is there beyond which we are going to have transition length is the distance required to get a, a constant velocity profile okay so we have after this transition point transition length we are going to have a fully developed flow where the velocity profile will remain the same for a laminar flow we are going to have a parabolic velocity profile for a turbulent flow we are going to have a flat velocity profile with the velocity changing from 0 to 99 percent near the boundaries alone okay so that way you can refer to the velocity profile diagram we know the based on this reynolds number we can classify the fluids into fluid flow into laminar flow and turbulent flow that should be known and we should know the what is law of conservation of mass the mass flow rate is conserved right so that m dot at location one and m dot at location two is equal right so that means what m dot is equal to rho a v that is rho is the mass density of the fluid a is the cross section area and b is the velocity and if the fluid is incompressible for example for liquids we can consider the density changes are negligible so that rho one equal to rho two so if you can compare it to locations where rho one a one v one equal to rho two a two v two so when rho 1 is equal to rho 2 that uh, that is when the density changes are negligible we can simplify that rho gets cancelled then we have a1 v1 equal to a2 v2 which is also called as one dimensional continuity equation so we have the volumetric flow rate equal to a into v that is the cross section area multiplied by velocity so that a1 v1 uh, equal to a2 v2 is the volumetric flow rate actual volumetric flow rate or theoretical volumetric flow rate uh, according to the continuity equation for a one dimensional flow and we know that in this uh, rho is the density a is the cross section area v is the velocity we should know that okay so coming to how we are going to measure this theoretical actual discharge remember we are going to have volumetric flow rate which is also called as a discharge so how we are going to determine this discharge these flow measuring devices can be classified as direct flow measuring direct measurements and indirect measurements direct measurements we will discuss what is direct measurement direct measurement is like volumetric flow rate is there you have a collection tank you will directly collect all the liquid or whatever is the liquid into the system and then you will be able to calculate the what is the volume it reach or even if you want to know how much mass is collected direct method is collect all the liquid into a beaker and then weigh it and know what is the mass right direct reading you keep a, a beaker uh, you have a balance let me say weighing balance over which a big beaker is kept and whatever is the volumetric flow rate you show it here and what is the direct mass you can find out right so in five minutes how much mass is collected you can directly see in the weighing balance or direct way what we do in our fm labs are we will have a collection tank we know the cross section area of the collection tank 
then we will we measure the height uh, rise uh, water level uh, liquid level rise for certain time and uh, cross section area multiplied by height divided by time taken it will give you the actual discharge right so that is our direct measurement method so that's what we use it in our laboratories to determine the actual discharge it's not theoretical discharge what we will be getting is actual discharge because we are measuring actually what is the rate at which the fluid is flowing that is called direct rate methods but these direct rate methods are difficult to use when the flow rate is very high right so when you have a very big pipeline like our water transportation from one city to city city gas distributions or in chemical factories where the volumetric flow rates are very high so when the capacity is very high the direct measurement is will may not be easier one also this direct measurement there may be fluctuations will not be easily handled by this direct methods coming to the indirect methods is we will make use of some of the physical properties or some of the basic working principles like how there will be differential pressure what is the change in pressure when we are changing the cross section area that kind of thing is there what is the forces acting on a body in your fluid flow what is the rate at which heat transfer is taking place or our coriolis forces or magnetic induced forces or frequency of vortices or even ultrasonic waves can be sent to note down these things right so that way there are different uh, basic working principles uh, based on which you can have different indirect volumetric flow rate measurements okay some of the flow measuring devices are for example it is a, a very a rotometer is there where a variable area cr cross section will be there over which a small float will be there and based on the float position with the uh, with the volumetric flow rate that that float will take a position and over which uh, scale will be there like that we can measure that is a indirect method okay so but in this a variable area method and uh, you can classify the even the flow measuring devices as variable area method as well as variable head methods okay so examples for variable head methods are venturi meter and orifice meter where the pressure head change in the pressure head is used to determine the volumetric flow rate and there is a change in cross section area variable area meters are there example for it is rotometer okay so there are other meters like rotating vane methods positive displacement devices differential pressure devices vortex shedding ultrasonic methods like that several methods are available okay and among these different type of flow meters in this lecture we are going to discuss in detail about orifice meters and venturi meters okay the flow flow measuring devices can be also classified based on the either the all the fluid is passing through this flow measuring device or not it can be classified as full bore meters that means all the fluid that is flowing in the pipeline will be allowed to pass through this flow measuring device in that case it is called as full bore meters and whereas insertion meters are it will only measure the local velocity at a particular point and then we can note down the total cross section area and we can take that down so that way we can insertion meters are also there examples for it are pitot's tube kind of thing okay and there can be for a closed channel we are have going to have this type of meters okay either full bore meter or insertion meter and in that we can classify them as variable head meters like venturi meter orifice meters and pitot's tubes are the measuring the change in pressure at two locations so that way we are uh, using these principles of change in pressure as the uh, pre basic principle to determine the volumetric flow rate and there are variable area meters example for it is rotometer as i have explained and what about for open channels say these are all closed conduits it can be a pipeline right usually circular pipeline is used for liquids but whereas for our ac ducts they are not in circular shape usually rectangular shape square shaped ducts are used when the fluid is in vapor form or gaseous form right so ac ducts are there air ducts are there all these places we may be using different shape right so based on that we are going to have different cross section area and also even hydraulic radius can be come into picture that will be learning in your theory course also okay now point here is what will we do for to measure the volumetric flow rate in a river in a canal in a channel open channel so when we call it as closed channel and open channel remember even in a pipeline can have a open channel flow there is a probability how when the volumetric flow rate is not that much great or in the reservoir that is not great you have say for example 10 cm uh, uh, diameter pipe in which only half of the pipe water is flowing then it is not flowing the flow is not like under pressure right so there is always atmospheric pressure freeze when wherever there is a free surface above the fluid 
in the fluid flow it comes under open channel because in a pipeline also if only half of the pipe water is flowing across it it means that there is atmospheric pressure acting on the surface of the fluid right in that case it is not a closed which we cannot even though it is a circular pipe we cannot consider it to be a closed channels okay so we have to consider that where half of the uh, pipe only having the water uh, because of the small flow rates in that case we are going to consider it as both end is open and uh, you are going to that uh, atmospheric air is uh, going in and out so that means the pressure at the above the liquid surface is atmospheric pressure that will come under open channel what is happening above the water of the river or water on the uh, in a canal so above which atmospheric pressure is acting so in all these cases so we are we have to consider the flow as open channel flows Oh, for open channel flows, can we use venturi meter, RE phase meter, rotor meter, or full bore meter or kind of thing? No. So for that, we have different set of flow measuring devices, which are called as weirs and notches. Okay. Weirs are, weirs are larger sizes of the notches. We call it as triangular notch, rectangular notch, trapezoidal notch kind of thing, depending upon the uh, opening that is there in this notch. Okay. Notch is nothing but a plate with the opening in different shapes rectangular shape opening triangular shape opening trapezoidal shape opening okay like that uh, different uh, openings can be there okay so this is used for small scale in laboratory scale we will be using some metal plates with openings but in a big river how to do it it's not possible right so for the term, same sizes we will be making with concrete wall concrete walls will be used a brick and mortar kind of thing are used so different big size structures are used right because the the width of the river is too high, right? We cannot bring in and keep a big metal there. So that's why material of construction for wares are cement material, cement, mortar, all that. One, okay, concrete material is used. Whereas for a small scale, metal pieces are used. Okay, so that way they, for open channels, we will be using either wares or notches. Okay, so that they are used for the flow measuring devices. Okay. And if you look at the usage of different flow meters, orifice meter is being almost 50% of the industries are using orifice meters and 46% people are using this thermal mass meters and turbines are used to uh, used in 46.6%. Okay. And electromagnetic measurements are used in 46%. Coriolis mass meters are used in 34%. Positive displacement methods are used in 30%. Remember, these percentages are more because in a particular industry, they don't just use orifice. They may be using all, right? So that way, this percentage is more than 100%. So for these, all these flow measuring devices, as I told you, there can be, it can be either uh, we have pressure which change in pressure which needs to be measured it means that pressure measuring devices is an integral part of this flow measuring devices right so for example if you take venturi meter we are going to have an inlet section and a throat section we are going to connect manometers to it right so to, because we want to know the pressure at these two points and that is used to determine the velocity that velocity is used in the formula for determining the discharge so that way pressure measuring whatever formula p equal to rho gh Right, so we are P by rho G is pressure head, all that we should be thorough with it. Okay, now coming to the first flow measuring device, Venturi meter. So, what is Venturi effect? So, a physicist called Giovanni Battista Venturi, he is the one who invented this Venturi effect. Okay, so what is that Venturi effect? It's nothing but a jet effect. What we are doing when you are to guard a house, uh, when you are spraying water for our pl plants and trees in our garden, what we do in the end of the hose, we are close putting our finger and doing what is happening there. We are reducing the cross section area. When you are reducing the cross section area, what is happening? The velocity is increasing. So that way we are able to spray water to a larger distance than the normal distance when you don't keep your finger. Right. So the default even une uneducated gardener will be able to make use of this venturi effect. So the same principle is used in this device where we purposefully reduce the cross section area. There is a cross section area is reduced and we are altering the velocity because when you change the pressure is changed. Right. Because according to Bernal equation, your total energy is conserved. Right. So to total energy at point one equal to total energy is point two. So when there is change in cross section area, there will be loss of pressure head at this location one where the diameter is more, where the cross section area is more, pressure head will be more. Uh, 
whereas when it is when the when you reduce the cross section area the pressure head will be converted into kinetic energy because total energy is conserved right so that change in pressure can be measured and then that can be related to derive at the required equation for venturi meter so how what is the, so these venturi meters are mainly used in these pipelines of waste water collection systems and treatment plants remember venturi meter can be used even with a uh, certain amount of solid particles in it okay even in slurry kind of things also it can be used okay in petrochemical industries it can be used in in, in chemicals to transport the chemicals also in the pipelines also it can be used okay crude oil pipelines they use this venturi meter to measure the flow rate okay and if you look at the live example our daily life where we are using this venturi meter is our two wheelers or four wheelers we are having this carburetor no in our carburetor there will be a, because wherever this air fuel ratio has to be maintained we want to know the what is the volumetric flow rate of this uh, uh, air and uh, fuel into the system so because of the carburetor the design is such that there is a venturi meter is present over there so based on which will help us to mix it will help the air and fuel to mix in proper ratio also okay so essentially what is the construction of a venturi meter a venturi meter will contain a inlet section a venturi meter will contain a inlet section where it the diameter will be equal to the pipeline diameter so you are having a, a certain diameter pipeline we have to this inlet section will be matching the diameter of the pipeline so that you are able to connect these two okay so inlet section and outlet section what will be the diameter yes so both inlet section and outlet section diameter will be equal and also that will be equal to the diameter of the pipeline okay so that is on number one what are the other important parts major three parts are there will be a con after inlet section we are going to have a convergent section okay so we will have a convergent section where we gradually reduce the diameter of the pipeline okay and it goes to a minimum diameter and after that there will be a continuous cylinder which is called as throat section where we are having the minimum diameter okay so that throat section is the important part in this venturi meter device because we are going to measure the pressure at this point mainly okay another first point is going to be inlet section so after this throat section as i said this pressure energy is converted into velocity head again we want to recover all the pressure so this we are going to have a section called as divergent section because our measurement is over after the throat section but still this device is having some certain extra length what for it it is to recover the pressure whatever pressure is lost pressure head is lost we want to recover the pressure head so again we gradually increase the cross section area of the device okay so, but it is longer than the convergent cone so there is always a question in why or placement also why the divergent section in a venturi meter is longer than the convergent section in a venturi meter so what happens here is this this is done to recover the pressure okay pressure is recovered here but that is called pressure recovery and the pressure recovery percentage is above 90 percentage or 95 percentage in venturi meters because of this divergent cone design whereas in orifice meter which we are going to discuss later the pressure recovery is maximum up to 60 percent to 70 percentage it is normally around 50 to 60 percentage only but in venturi meters this pressure recovery is more because of this divergent cone so this angle of this divergent cone will be 5 to 8 degree whereas this convergent cone can be 15 to 25 degree degrees okay and after this convergent cone that is the uh, outlet section so that is the typical uh, design of a venturi meter so you can even draw a velocity pro profile or you can draw the what you call it as a pressure profile okay how the pressure is changing in the inlet section and outlet section we are going to have maximum pressure no doubt about it because that is pressure is going to equal to the whatever the pressure with which fluid is flowing in the actual pipeline so we are going to have a maximum pressure but after that uh, during the uh, conversion cone pressure is decreasing okay and at the throat section it will remain minimum then in the recovery section slowly the pressure will increase but the pressure at the outlet section is not going to be the same as that of the inlet section because as i said this rec pressure recovery is maximum 98 percent right so that at least two percentage decrease in the pressure in the uh, outlet section will be there so that way we can say that the pressure is 98 percent recovered in it so velocity profile sorry pressure profile you should be able to draw for a venturi meter along the length of the venturi meter device okay 
So what is happening? I repeat, what we have, what is the principle of this device of venturi meter? So we are going to have a inlet flow where the pressure will be high, pressure head will be more. Whereas once when the throat section, the pressure head will be reduced, will be minimum. Again in the downstream side or the outlet section, we are going to have 98% pressure which is being recovered. Okay. Now we will derive the equation for finding out the discharge for venturi meter. Okay. So what is a venturi meter? So construction is explained already. We have a throat section and we have an inlet section. So the pressure at this inlet section is P1. The cross section area at this inlet section is A1, that is corresponding diameter is D1, and we have um, cross section area P rho. Okay, then the velocity at this location will be V1. Okay, similarly, we have a throat section where we are going to have pressure P2, diameter D2, so correspondingly area is A2, then we will have velocity V2. Right? So this is what we have. So pressure at inlet section is P1, pressure at throat section is P2, the diameter of the inlet section is D1 and uh, diameter at throat section is D2 and corresponding areas are A1 and A2 respectively at inlet and throat sections. So then we will have velocities are V1 and V2 at location 1 and 2 and if a particular amount of fluid is flowing across this with a volumetric flow rate of Q, so what will be the theoretical uh, volumetric flow rate. So you will have Q is equal to A1 into V1 which is equal to AT into V2. Okay, so we can express this velocity 1 as a function of velocity 2. How? So we can take this V1 equal to A2 by A1 into V2. Okay. Now, if we apply the Bernoulli's equation between these two points. So applying Bernoulli equation between point 1 and 2. 1 is inlet section, 2 is throat section. And this is horizontal. So this is a horizontal venturi meter. Okay. So we have a horizontal venturi meter, that means the datum is same at location 1 and 2. So we have a horizontal venturi meter and applying Bernoulli's equation between 1 and 2, Bernoulli's theorem, what is that? So total energy is conserved, right? So that way, so we will have P1 by rho g plus V1 square by 2g is equal to P2 by rho g plus V2 square by 2g. So then what is delta P? So then we have P1 minus P2 by rho g is equal to V2 square minus V1 square by 2g. Okay. So then if we can write this as venturi head, this head is the venturi head because the head difference between inlet section and throat section of a venturi meter which can be called as venturi head. Okay. So the venturi head we have is capital H is the venturi head in venturi meter. So we have 2GH taking this to the left hand side is equal to V2 square minus V1 square. Okay, so then if you take V1 substitute here, what you get is V2 square into V2 square minus A2 square by A1 square into V2 square. So if you take V2 square common outside, so what you get is 1 minus A2 square by A1 square, which we can write as A1 square minus A2 square by A1 square. Okay, so we already have left hand side is 2GH. So now write what is V2, can you simplify this, you can rewrite to get what is V2, okay. So what you will get, if you take the, this V2, 2GH is in the left hand side, okay, so 2GH into A1 square divided by A1 square minus A2 square is equal to V2 square, right? 
and what is v2 v2 is a1 by square root of a1 square minus a2 square into square root of 2g h this is a2 then we have seen that what is q theoretical q theoretical is a2 into v2 ok so then what you had a2 substitute this here what you get is a1 a2 divided by square root of a1 square minus a2 square into square root of 2g h so this is our q theoretical so remember in Bernoulli's equation no losses are considered right so that's why modified Bernoulli's equation came into picture so here the losses are not considered so that's why we the actual discharge this is the theoretical discharge what is supposed to be there but the actual discharge is always going to be always less than this q theoretical okay because there will be several forms of losses will be there so that means that what is q actual by q theoretical is less than one right so if you take the ratio this ratio so this cd which is defined as cd cd is equal to q actual by q theoretical and this is going to be less than one so for a venturi meter so what is happening in a venturi meter is the pressure is changed right by changing the pressure head we are increasing the we are altering the velocity right so because we have seen that in bernoulli equation if in a total energy is concerned in horizontal zone the horizontal venturi meter we don't have z time okay so when velocity when the pressure is decreased by reducing the from the inlet section to throw section we are reducing the diameter uh, cross section area we are reducing so that's why what will happen to the velocity velocity will increase when the velocity at one point is increasing to adjust total energy to be constant the pressure will decrease so that is the principle which is being used in this venturi meter okay so we are changing the head okay by changing the head at two locations we are measuring the change in pressure how much pressure loss is there that is done that's why we are having a inlet section converging cone and then a throat section then why the divergent section is there after that uh, throat section is to recover the pressure okay pressure recovery is important because uh, whatever energy conversion has taken place we want that energy to be recovered so we want the same pressure to be present when you when you so you have connected a venturi meter device here so the inlet pressure is something so what is the pressure here across this device so we have the device and pressure is inlet pressure and we are going to have outlet pressure once the fluid is coming out right so what is the pressure difference what is the pressure recovery so that is the indicator this coefficient of discharge is an indicator of how much pressure is recovered in this system so for a venturi meter device the pressure recovery is more than 90 percentage so even if it is well designed we will even have around 99 percentage or 98 percentage of pressure recovery which means that cd value will be ranging from 0.9 to 1 for a venturi meter device that is the advantage of this venturi meter but the cost the moment you are talking about higher increasing the coefficient of discharge the cost to, to device that a, a venturi meter will increase okay and these venturi meters are widely used in uh, carburetors in the automobiles all these automobiles where the we want to maintain the air fuel ratio for combustion to take place in the motor automobiles all these places this venturi meter design is used okay so that is that is an indicator and other places are if any solid is present in the fluid with this kind of venturi meters are preferred preferably used instead of pitot's tube kind of thing because there will be no chance of uh, accumulation of any solid particle in front of the device okay because it is a full bore meter what is a full bore meter the total fluid in the pipeline is allowed to pass through the device in that case it is called full bore meters there is other type of fluid fluid measuring device called as insertion meter where all the fluid will not pass through this insertion meters okay in full bore meter means total fluid is allowed to pass say it is a pipeline so we make a opening here and then we connect our venturi meter so the total fluid is allowed to pass through your measuring flow measuring device in that cases they are called as flow measuring devices so that's why we are having in this one we have derived the expression so we got the theoretical discharge and we have defined what is coefficient of discharge so in the laboratory also we will do performing an experiment to determine the coefficient of discharge for a venturi meter and if you look at the orifice meter similar derivation will be there 
only difference is what is a2 how we are defining the a2 changes okay so for example for a orifice meter in venturi meter a2 means location 2 is your throat right throat section whereas in orifice meter location 2 this is for venturi meter whereas in case of orifice meter this location 2 is the point of orifice means a2 means cross section area of orifice okay so that is the cross section area that means d2 means diameter of the orifice okay so in case of uh, orifice meter also we will have a similar derivation where this a2 is taken as the diameter of the orifice and with respect to orifice meters the coefficient of discharge will range from 50 to 60 percentage only that is 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 or 0 0.65 you are going to get coefficient of discharge for orifice meters because uh, unlike in venturi meter where we have a divergent section which is longer the pressure recovery was possible whereas in orifice meter is orifice is nothing but a circular plate right you take a plate make a small hole that is a orifice meter so that way that is a difficulty in handling this uh, getting pressure recovery in orifice meters that's why we will be getting a coefficient of discharge value between 0 0.4 to 0 0.67 that is a maximum range or particularly it will be 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 okay so that will be the coefficient of discharge for orifice meter so with this equations you will be making use theoretical discharge definition what is actual discharge what is cd so that will be used to in your derivation determination of coefficient of discharge for RFI meters also. So that way in your fluid particle mechanics laboratory, you will be performing two experiments where in one you will do determine the coefficient of discharge for venturi meter and another one determination of coefficient of discharge for orifice meters. Okay, so actually in orifice meter in some in place of D2, actually we have to exactly we have to consider a location of Vena contractor. Okay. Okay, so that Vena contracta is actually to be the second position, but it is it is expressed as a function of this uh, related to your diameter of the orifice. So that way it is justified in using this A2 value for uh, orifice meter, but we should know what is Vena contracta in the orifice meter. So Vena contracta is the location where the fluid once it passes through the orifice, you know, so orifice has a particular diameter. So the fluid is in initially flowing totally, if you look at the cross section, the total across the pipeline it is flowing as when, when the orifice is present in the side view if you look at so if the total fluid is becoming a stream of smaller diameter right so after which also if the diameter it will be it will reach a minimum before it be, gets expanded so the place in the downstream side of the orifice meter in a pipeline where the diameter of the fluid stream is very reaching a minimum diameter that is called vena contract house so that is the location at which the fluid is having a minimum cross section area fluid stream it's not the pipeline it is the stream you remember so the pipeline is same the diameter of the pipeline is the same okay so the diameter of the pipeline is the same but the fluid okay so here what is there a deformation will be there so that is why pressure losses is more and the recovery is not possible that's why we are not getting so around 95 percentage of c coefficient of discharge as in venturi meter here you will be getting only in the range of 50 to 60 percent that is 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 okay so that's what we will be performing experiment in your fpm laboratory also okay so this is a classical example of application of bernoulli's equation to determine the discharge so it is that's why this venturi meter and rfi meter comes under the flow measuring devices and they are full bore meters okay so this is variable head meter we are varying the head of the fluid pressure head of the fluid in two locations so that's why it is a variable head meter okay I hope you understood this derivation. So these equations you will be making use in your laboratory. In this lecture, we have seen introduction to flow measuring devices and what is the orifice meter, its construction and derivation of working equation from the Bernoulli's equation. In the next lecture, we will discuss about orifice meters. Thank you so much for joining my classroom. Bye-bye.